Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. In this video I will talk about this scale. A friend gave it to me because the battery ran out and he didn't want to, to buy new ones. And this is because, as you can see here, it uses two coin batteries. 2 times 0, 20, 32. Each one provides 3 volts, so both of them provide 6 volt to the board. And because 6 volt is quite an unusual uh, voltage for electronics, I thought there would be a voltage regulator which would convert the 6 volts to probably 5 volt or 3.3 volts. And since there's a voltage regulator, I thought why not provide even more. So here we have a 9 volt battery which provides the power and which will replace two batteries. These batteries are a lot easier to find and a lot cheaper than coin cells. And if we try it, we see it works perfectly fine. The other modification I did was this. As you can see here, there is a USB port. And the idea I had is that I want to connect this scale to my computer so it can read automatically the weight which is on top of it. And I wanted to know how easy it is to make that and how easy it is to read the measurements from this scale and to interface it with the computer. Now if you want you can now use it as part of the quantified self movement and track your weight gain or weight loss, your weight change over time directly by connecting to the computer. And we'll have a look in details how I did it and how it works. As you can see from the back, there is not a lot of interface. I already changed the battery and then we have one switch and two pins. The switch is just to change between the units which are used. Right now it uses kilograms, so the screen is flipped because normally this is on top. So here we can see kilograms and Quick change to the middle. Tick. Wait until it switches off. And start it again. We we'll recalibrate. Here we have LB. This is the sign for pounds. This is the imperial unit which is used in the US, but I really prefer the units from the international system, so kilograms. And then the last one, so it has three positions, and the last one is even a weirder measurement unit. Let's wait until it stops and then you'll see. So here it starts again and here it is ST. ST stands for stone. This is a British unit and I think it's around six kilogram. One stone is around six kilogram. One pound is around a bit less than 0 0.5 kilograms. So yeah here we have the switch. We don't we do a second thing we have here is two pins which you can see here. And this is probably not an interface to connect to the computer. So one is ground, uh, then one would be ground and the other would be just one signal. And um, it could be just to communicate with the scale, you would have to implement a one wire protocol if you want to have it be directional. And you only want to put such an interface if you want to calibrate it. But Having this implementation of a one wire protocol or a single wire protocol is quite a bit of an overhead for just a very cheap scale. So when you have two pins, you immediately have to think about jumpers. And if we put the jumper on these two pins, I hope I can do it through here. Up. Now we have the pin, and if we switch it on, oh, let's put the kilograms in, and if we switch it on, we see it shows all the thing, and then it's in cal, so it's, it's really for calibrating the weight. And how it works is that you put 50 kilograms on top of it, and this weight, when you press, when it started, it just measured zero kilogram, this is what you see in the initiation when it's the digit moves and then you put 50 kilograms on top of it and probably because it's proportional, linearly proportional, it just knows uh, 
it just knows what the slope is and so we can figure out um, the weight in between. And this is how you calibrate the device. And as we can see, it's not really an interface. So the next thing is we want to have a look inside and see if there's an interface hidden inside. As you can see, I already did some modification. And the first one is this battery, which goes here to the battery port. Then we have cables. These are also what I modified afterwards on this pin header. This pin header wasn't there in the beginning. Neither was this one. Only this pin header for calibration was populated. Uh, this row, this row too, which goes on both sides. So probably it's for the weight gauges. And then remove the battery. I added also this one so I connect the battery directly instead of having cables. Um, we'll have a look at all these ones once we see the set, but as we can see, the board is pretty simple. We have a paper board because of the brownish color, which is just single-sided. There are no traces at all on this side. You only have some components, but not all the components. So they use a mix between surface mount components and through hole components. And let's have a look at the other side. And this is the other side. As you can see, it's pretty simple. We have two bu three buttons on the top, and this is for the menu, so you can set the profiles um, about individual persons. And then we have here a zebra connector. The zebra connector is connected to this sort of cable, and then it goes to the LCD. Up. Then we have here the voltage regulator. Uh, so we actually do have a voltage regulator and that's why providing 9 volt is not an issue at all. Here we have a quad op amp and I'll explain a bit later why we use an op amp uh, in wide scales, weight scales. And this is a uh, memory. So this is really to save, this is uh, I2C EEPROM and this is to save the data which you um, which you configure using these buttons and then you can have your weight over time. And here we have, as always, a die on the below of epoxy and this is, this does all the calculation and so on. It handles the LCD, it handles the I2C memory to store it and it handles the input which is coming from the quad op amp. Actually you need an op amp and how weight measurement works is pretty easy. They use strain gauges. Gauges, as you can see here, we'll take one off. So these are all the cables, we have four of them. One in each corner, as you've seen also the feet on the other side. One, two, three, and the other one is also in the corner. And four. And how this works is that Whenever you apply pressure, so it, this is just bare metal, and on the bare metal you have three wires. What's under the bare metal is just some resistors. And the idea is that when you push on the metal because of the weight, you will deform it, you will distort it. One side will get compressed when you push hard on it, and the other side will be expanded. And this changes the resistance of, of, of the metal. So what they do here is that just, they just take the resistance and then it goes to the op amp and the op amp amplifies the diff this difference and this, this subtle difference so you can really measure uh, the weight using that. And this is how simple it is. We also have two cables right here and these are go to the metal plates as you've seen on the other side, now the buttons are falling off, we have metal plates on the four corners. These are used to measure the conductivity of your skin and they use that to determine the weight, the amount of water you have or the amount of fat you have in your body. But I don't know how this is done actually. I was more only, only interested in the weight. So this is the weight gauge. Here we can see we have a small push, push button and this is what we hear clicking every time we step on the scale. We only have two of them in the front, so on the back, uh, on this side, one here and one on the other side. And the scale only activates if you push on this button. Then it starts measuring whatever is on this string gauges. gauges. Um, so that's that's all actually. That's that's pretty all. We have four 
linkages which go to the op amp and then this is processed by here and here is the connector which I soldered so it comes directly from from the chip itself so probably this is already some process data if you want to identify what these pins which I've soldered here and this pin is and this will be our next step now we want to find out what's on these pins here and the first thing you always do is found, find the ground pins for that you will just use the multimeter in the continuity mode you can see here we go in the continuity mode what it does is that whenever you short the leads it just beeps and this tells us that um, something is connected or the, the two pins are directly connected uh, we know ground from the battery in the beginning the minus pole which is here from the battery is also used as ground and then everything else is um, and then this is power so we'll go through the pins you can see we only have one ground pin and this is this cable this is also why I soldered the cable on the calibration the right pin is also ground and the left one is probably a connected to a pull-up resistor so if there's no connection on this pin then it's high and then if you put the jumper it ties this pin to low and this way it knows okay now I have to calibrate and on this nothing is there I don't know what BM is I couldn't figure out but we'll have a look at, at these pins now we know that this one is ground um, we want to see what voltages are on these pins and for that I will first connect the battery on it and we will probe the each pin, measure the voltage of each pin. So now I've connected back the battery and we will measure the voltages voltages which we find on these pins. For that you just use the multimeter, go in voltage mode. I'll put it here so we can see the values, not be in the way. Here we know we have ground, and then we can just probe the other pins. And first we have to switch on. The board so we press on the button and there's a switch as you can hear the small click which switches on the board and then we should measure the voltages nothing 3.3 .3 volts so we know that the voltage regulated they regulated 3.3 .3 volts 3.3 volts here we have one volt but it's fluctuating as you can see, it's one volt, but it's fluctuating a lot. And here we have two to three volts, and this is not fluctuating. So we wait until it switches off. Here's a timeout. Here, now we see it switched off, and when it switches off, this pin here, as well as this pin, just go low. So whenever you press on the button again, press, tack, let's press on it. Here we can see it's back at 3 to 3 volt. So we can use this one to figure out when the board is on and when it performs measurements. And this is why I connected this cable here. This cable, as we've seen, varies a lot. So now the board is off. Press again we can see here 3 to 3 volts and this one may, uh, fluctuates a lot depending on actually how i press on it but as you can see it fluctuates a lot. so this is probably some kind of signal which is transmitted and we'll have a look on the oscilloscope what the signal looks like so let me connect the oscilloscope to it so here i've connected the ground proof from the oscilloscope we have the blue probe which is connected to this signal which we've seen is at 3.3 volt when the scale is on and then the yellow probe connected on this one volt fluctuating, fluctuating signal if we look at the oscilloscope get even more when I press on the feed to switch it on we see that the blue one is at 3.3 .3 volt, as indicated here, and the yellow one is some sort of a PVM signal, 
as you can see here. And its frequency is around 3 megahertz. But if we look closer at it, we can see that this changes. Not only do the duty cycle of the on and the low do change, but also the frequency change. It's not exactly 3 megahertz all the time, it's fluctuating a bit. We see it between the minimum and the maximum. And the more I press, the shorter the high duty cycle is and the longer the low duty cycle is. So this is at zero. When I press hard on it, you can see that the high signal is low and the low signal is longer. And this gets back on. So we know that this has something to do with the weight, which is this is just the signal to, to know if it's on or off. And this PVM signal somehow encodes the weight which is measured by the scale. Here we can see it again. <clears throat> now we want to I want to measure this value. So we can see it on the oscilloscope, but we want to interface it with the computer. So we need something else than an oscilloscope, something a bit smaller. And but we one which can also measure this this signal. And that's the next step. And the worst way I came with to interface to the computer is simply using one of these microcontroller based boards. So this is just an Atmel 80 mega 328p. Here we have USB. This is the USB to serial converter to talk to this microcontroller. And actually, although it's written Robot Nano V4, it's an Arduino Nano clone. I, they are pretty cheap and this is why I, I have no remorse putting it inside and using it simply for this task. And I write my own C code for this microcontroller. So, um, we just have to connect the three signals, which we figured out, to two pins of this microcontroller so we can measure it. The most important point is ground, which is connected here. Then we have, this is the on-off signal. I decided to connect it on this pin. And this is the PVM signal. <clears throat> so, the Arduino, or the Arduino, this Arduino Nano, or the... Uh, works operates at 5 volts. So the pins on the Atmega are at 5 volts. Now we've seen that this is 3.3 .3 volts, but 3.3 .3 volt crosses the threshold. So whenever you get a 3.3 .3 volts, the 5 volt pins still detect that it's high. But the problem is that with the 1 volt cable, 1 volt doesn't cross the threshold when, the, uh, when it operates at 3.3 .3 volts. So we cannot simply uh, use a digital I.O. pin and um, check if it's low or high, or we cannot use it as trigger. But there is a special function provided by this um, Atmega. It is an analog comparator. And this triggers whenever the signal is higher or lower than the low value. So it has two inputs, a low value, which is on this pin, the minus, Pin and then a high value, which is another value, which is here. And whenever the value which is on the plus pin is higher than the value which is the, on the minus pin, then the analog compar comparator will tell it's a one. And you can even trigger an interrupt based on that. And this is what I did. So this is also what you, why you see the two or the three um, resistors here. This is just a voltage divider. Here we have ground ground and plus 5 volts. Um, so what I do is I simply divide it by 10 using the, these resistors. And here we have a 0 0.5 volt signal. So whenever the pin, which is at 1 volt, crosses the 0 0.1, 0 0.5 volt threshold, we have a 1 and else we have a 0. And this is how I can measure the signal and then trigger on whatever is, is on it. And the other thing I did is simply use a timer to measure the width of this signal. And then by cutting out a bit of the scale here, so I can fit this Arduino Nano clone board, I can just put it inside. And then we have USB on the front, as you've seen in the beginning, and we can directly connect to the USB. So I'll shortly talk about the code, and then we can test it. 
So let's have a look at the firmware which I've wrote for this Atmega microcontroller. This is the source code and it's, it will also be available in the Git. And as you can see, there are not a lot of files and the code is pretty small. It fits in around 200 lines of code. Now we can compile the code and directly flash it on the microcontroller, which it does here. And now we can connect to the serial port of this board. So for that, I use picocom to open the serial code. We provide the board rate, which you set in the source code, and then the port which it connects to. And when you connect to it, it welcomes you with a message. So if I now press on the scale, it reads the, the weight, and whenever a weight is stable, it will show you this value. So when I press on the scale, and I have a stable value for three seconds, it will show me uh, for, for three measurements, but there are three measurements per second, then it will show me uh, the current weight. But it's only if it's stable. It's not like the scale where it all the time shows you, but here I only show you when it's stable. Here, the next measurement. And if I let it rest, it will go back to zero. And it will stop, it will stop showing the measurements once the scale is off. So now the scale is running, it still shows measurements, and now the scale, it turned itself off because of the timeout and there is nothing indicated again. If we switch on the scale, then we start from the beginning. And how it works is pretty easy. It, um, it really takes the PVM. Actually, let me show it to you. So let's clean this and let's make the debug version. In the debug version, we show you how it works. So we compile the debug version, we flash it on the device, and now we connect back to it. When I press on the button, it knows, as, as you showed, it detected that the scale started and is on, and now you see all these measurements. Let me press just on the scale to have one measurement. And switch off, and then we'll go through from beginning on, if I can scroll back from the beginning. Yeah. So here you can see that it's the scale just started. And we see two values. So the PVM, as we've seen the PVM has two values, when it's high and when it's low. And this is the number of ticks I measured on timer one for high and low value. And here I always show which is the current value because I average over the three last values and if it's stable. So every time a new value comes in, it will completely change. And if it's if, if the next value is too far away from the previous value, it resets this stable counter. So this is where it starts to get the zero value. So when the scale initiates, you see a eight going from left to right, calibrating the scale and zeroing the current measurements. And this is what you see here. Um, it's, it starts the scale and then it comes to this value and here it gets pretty stable. So this low value is stable and then the high value is stable and so on. And we see we have three stable measurements. And since it's the first measurement, we count it as zero. So these are the values for uh, the zero kilogram measurement based on the timer ticks. And then it starts again. And every time the value is stable, so within five or 10 ticks of these measurements, so I think it's 10 ticks on timer one and five ticks on timer, no, uh, 10 ticks on the high value and five ticks on the low value. But you can configure this threshold in the source code itself. So whenever it's stable, which you see here, we have three stable high and three stable low measurements, then it shows you again, which was the zero value, which is the current value which has been measured uh, and is stable 
from time one and then it interprets it as kilogram and this is what we see if we don't have the debug firmware and it continues on and on and here we can see for example we've pressed on the scale so the value for example here the value is too far away from the previous value so it will reset the stable factor start from zero and wait until it's stable enough and we will see here again the value uh, is too different so it will restart this table and again and after some time we will have a stable value and we show the weight which is on it how i determine the weight from the stable uh, the weight from this timer tick is pretty simple i just put it I use this debug interface and then I put some well-defined weights on the scale, which I can read on the scale itself. So you just have the zero value, you put a weight on the scale, which doesn't move. The scale will indicate you the weight of this object and the program will indicate which the number of ticks it had. And based on that, I could plot the the relation between the number of ticks and the weight which is there and we'll have a look at that so here we can see how i did it i put it different object with different weights on it and then from the output we just saw from the firmware over the serial port i recorded the zero value for the timer one ticks for the zero value for the high PVM uh, signal and for the low PVM signal. And as you can see, it is pretty stable if you don't put any weights on it. Then you put the two uh, values which it has measured and which were stable. This is the difference between the measured value and the zero value, so the delta. And then I just plotted it. And as you can see, the delta low is pretty linear and proportional while the data the delta high is not that linear so by knowing the number of ticks in the low signal of the pvm in the low uh, value of the pvm signal you can proportionally figure out which weight the object has so here we have the um the number of ticks and here we have the kilograms which are on the scale and as you can see we could figure it out so now the idea is to find the coefficient and the origin of this of this slope um, of this line and for that I use simply Wolfram Alpha and I ask for a linear fit because it's a linear curve as you've seen it's proportional and I want to fit all the points which are in there and here we can see the weight and the number of ticks which are plotted here so on the x axis you have the number of ticks for the low count and on the um, y axis you have the weight and as you can see it is pretty linear as also the diagnostic show um, this is the slope and this is the origin and as you can see the origin is not actually zero so the scale needs a bit of a weight before it can start uh, measuring this um, the weight and if we come back to 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 the figure maybe it uses the delta high for for this value um i don't really know or maybe it just corrects what's on there but the dots after the certain value after a certain value uh, are, are quite exact and here yeah we have this linear coefficient so we have the two value the slope and the origin if we look at the code this is exactly what i put here the origin of the low signal and the coefficient for the slope the value which we've shown here and then i just measure the difference between the zero level and the measured value i multiply it by the coefficient i add this origin and i just display the weight and because the um 
the the values of the low measurements are more stable and more linear i only use that to show the weight and that's it this way i could um, i can put any weight on it and treat so i've did some tests compared what I've measured to what's written on the screen. And there is a difference for uh, of approximately 200 to 300 grams. So up to 200 to 300 grams, but that's okay. I didn't want to have that precise scale. And the scale itself, if you do the measurements over some time um, for the same weights, it will show you different weights. So for the same object, it will show you different weights different weights. So this error is, uh, I account for this error as well. And then, long as I have half of kilogram uh, precision, that's pretty fine for me. And here we have the, the end product. So we have the scale and we can connect it over USB to the computer. And whenever we switch it on and it does some measurements, then the microcontroller, which is on the back, will send the interpretation of this measurement and will tell which, uh, what weight is on this balance. It doesn't exactly show the weight which is on there because this is interpreted a different way. I simply use the PVM and I interpret the PVM my way. So there might be a slight drift of 300 grams between what is displayed here and what is measured, but that's okay. That's precise enough for me. Um, even more that this scale, if you measure at two different days the same weight, then you may have a uh, a difference of 400 grams. So 300 kilograms in the interpretation of the PVM signal is quite okay. The problem now is that this is not very practical. Although you can still have the measurements from the USB to serial cable, uh, from the USB cable, uh, you don't want all the time to have a computer connected on the scale. You want, preferably you would like to have it wirelessly. And this is quite easy to do. As we can see here, on the left side, we still have a microcontroller, which is connected over the USB. But then on the right side, I have a small module, which makes it wireless. So this is an HEC05. It's a quite cheap UART to Bluetooth converter. So on one side, you connect the UART port from this microcontroller. And then on the other side, you have the antenna for Bluetooth and it provides the serial port profile. So whatever data is sent over the serial, which you normally read over USB, is also sent to this port. Now we can take simply one phone, which connects our Bluetooth to this Bluetooth module. Whenever we switch it on and do some measurements, we should also see the measurements appearing here. And this is what we see. Here's zero kilogram, and whenever I get some stable measurement, let's try to have that. Here, with one finger, I just press around three to three kilograms. And this way we can read wirelessly the weight which is measured by the scale. So this is if you want to have to, to transform your scale into a very cheap, um, measurement and connect it. So you just need a microcontroller, that's not expensive, the USB to UART converter, no, the UART to serial converter, to um, Bluetooth converter, and now you have your own scale for less than 20 euros. And with that, the project is done.